What's good, guys? It's your boy Stevie G coming at you with another episode of the Seamless Garage podcast. This one's just going to be an update, man. Um, I know I gave a small little update in the initial Big Idea podcast episode, but uh, I want to kind of give you guys the full spill on the talent and the current events of it, and then also just kind of uh, how Seamless is doing and what we got going on there. Cause it's kind of been it's kind of been slow, um, and uh, I really want to put some more content out for you guys. But let's I want to discuss it. So um, get ready, get ready. So uh, let's get into it. All right, so. Um, as far as the talent goes, all right, there's a lot of stuff going on with the talent. If you haven't followed us in a while, um, you probably don't know that I've got majority of the parts in um, on Instagram, on the seamless Instagram. I showed you guys, we got everything in now. Um, the, uh, you know, obviously there's going to be little things missing that I'm going to have to come up with. That's just what happens in a project car. You know, for you guys that don't know much about the talent. This talent, go back and listen to the original episode of my big idea on the talent. I always say big idea. That's just one of the words I use. But, um, so not the actual big idea episode, but go back and find the episode where I'm talking about my ideas for the talent and what I got planned for it. And and also, if you listen throughout the episodes, it kind of evolves. Like, it's still the same general idea, but it evolves. Um... So I just lost my train of thought. I'm trying to figure out where I was going there. But basically, it's evolved. And so this, what I'm about to discuss with you, is kind of the final form. Okay. Um, it's, but okay, I remember what I was doing. So the reason I brought that up is I want I want to um, make it clear that when I got this car, I got this car um, for free, right, from a buddy of mine. He gave it to me. My buddy Ernie, he gave it to me. Shout out to Ernie, bro, if you're listening. I appreciate it still to this day, man. It gives me it gives me a reason to get out in the shop, and uh, and uh, gets my creative gets my creative juices flowing, bro. And um, it's been a dream car of mine for since I was a little kid, man, to own a DSM. So so uh, you made my dream come true, and now I'm just trying to build it, and uh, and hopefully you approve of what I do when I finish it up. But um, it came as a rolling chassis. Everything was great. It's in great shape. Um, literally a rolling chassis, not the front end tore off of it. Not everything tore apart. Like it's a complete chassis, just missing the uh, engine and trans and the transfer case, obviously. You know that's part of the deal. But uh, so it was rolling. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to tear it down, which I am. That's what I'm doing. Tear it down and um get it fresh because i want it to be not only street ready but i also want it to be show ready you know this is going to be seamless's um flagship car you know in my opinion this is going to be everybody's going to look at this car and go okay this is what seamless can do this is what seamless is about you know what i'm saying so i want to make sure i do it right but i also want to make sure it's true to me okay so that's that's the plan with this thing that's the plan with this uh this talent um so anyway, back to what I was saying. So it's a long process on building up. That's why you know people are like, "Are you are you still working on it? Are you done with it?" You know, I've got all kind of crazy questions. You know, some doubts about whether I'm still working on it or not. And yes, I am. Yes, I am. So there's just a lot to do to get it the way that I want it to get it to my uh, expectations and my standards. So because um, I want to get it back fresh. You know what I mean? I want to get it back all the way fresh. So if you don't know, I, what happened was my, my original plan, I'll just go through it real quick. I won't bore you guys to death with it, but my original plan was get the car, it's going to set, I'm gonna get it prepared while I'm building um, a stroker engine, okay? I'm gonna build a 2.3 stroker um, with a uh, HX40 whole set turbo, um, you know, just set up full build, full build. Um, like 8.5 or 9 to 1 compression. Um, I'm going to run um, 
methanol injection, you know what I mean? Big cams, probably like, yeah, bigger cams. And um, probably like some S3s, probably. Some GSC S3s, I think is what I was thinking at the time. And um, so a big, a big boy set up. And, you know, the car was just going to wait till then. Well, what happened is when I went to go get a transmission, this dude had all these other parts that he wanted to sell. And I got them for a great deal. So I ended up getting a block, a uh, head, pretty much everything I needed for a factory stock engine. So what I, I was like, you know what? While I'm saving up the money to build this this uh, really nice stroker engine that's gonna be completely built right. It's gonna be sent off to the shop, all that good stuff. Like the, the block is gonna be sent off to the machine shop, heads are gonna be sent off to the machine shop, head is gonna be built correctly with you know everything aftermarket, you know, aftermarket forged pistons and rods so everything built right and everything new and on point um, while I'm waiting on that because that's gonna take some money quite a bit of money I've got this engine right here right now that I, I can put a couple hundred dollars into it get it back into running order with fresh gaskets fresh bearings and everything everything pretty much fresh on fresh piston rings if you if you don't know go check out the YouTube um, video where we put rings I've got all the videos on us putting this engine together I was like why not do that and throw it in the car and have it running and I can drive the car um, get all the kinks figured out before I put this other engine in so meanwhile I'm be building this engine while I'm driving the car so that was my second thought and so that's where I'm at now it's still my thought that's my that's my new thought is let's do that so um, to catch you up to date if you haven't been watching the YouTube videos the engine is ready, uh, transmission is ready. I need to put those together. Um, I, I just got done um, coating the FP manifold. Need to attach that to my 16G turbo that I got. I got a big 16G, so that's gonna go on there. Um, let's see, <clears throat> basically everything else. We got the front mount intercooler that's going on. Um, a lot of EVO 3 stuff, EVO 3 injectors. Um, let's see. And then as far as the as far as the uh, as far as the mass airflow goes, that is a second gen second gen 2G uh, mass airflow sensor. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. But uh, you know, as of right now, um, I've got everything still pulled out. I got the bumpers, all the lights, and everything off because I'm getting the body ready too. Um, but right now where I'm at, I'm cleaning the engine bay out. <clears throat> I've pretty much got everything out of the engine bay. I'm deleting the AC. AC's gone. Um, it's kind of crazy here in Texas to be doing that, but I just don't, I don't know. I want the engine bay to be clean. Okay, I may change my mind later. I'm keeping all those parts. I may change my mind later and go, nah, I need some AC. But uh, AC's deleted. I don't know if you guys know this about the one. I don't know if it's like this on other DSM. I don't know if you know this, but on the one G, on the one GAs especially, at least, as far as I know, on the driver's side, um, I think it's the driver's side, the harness for the headlight and all that stuff actually runs in the fender well already. You know, most cars when you want to tuck the harness, that's one of the ones you're trying to hide because it runs over the fender well. But this one runs underneath the fender well, like it's supposed to when you want to tuck it. So. It's set up. It's kind of like that on the on the passenger side too. The only one that I'm going to have to play with is the <clears throat> engine harness. And honestly, I would like to get new connectors if I can find them. I want to get new connectors and um, make my own little tuck harness because I can do that. I'm pretty good with wiring, so I would enjoy doing something like that. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now. Um, we've got the we've got the harness and stuff tucked everything pulled off I need to get it sanded down so that I can spray the bay because I'm going to respray the bay white or whatever color I decide to do it but I'm pretty sure I'm going to be white it's going to be white again and I'm just going to go back white go back all original but that's what I'm doing right now getting the engine bay ready to get that going getting it all painted um cool thing for the shop is I've got I, I just uh, got two different um, spray guns Two different spray guns one for my primer and then one for my base and clear okay and uh, so I've got 
everything I need in order to paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just basically gonna set up a pop-up booth on my own in the shop there. I'm gonna use the lift as like the main anchor. And I'm gonna run plastic over and everything. Try to keep the dirt down and if not, just keep it wet. That way there's no dirt in the air. I just don't want my paint to be dirty. You know what I'm saying? So um, cleanliness is next to godliness when it comes to painting. Um, as far as what I've learned, you know, I'm no painter, but I'm working on it. I want to get there. So, uh, there's that. Um, let's see. And then, you know, I'm still trying to decide on the color. You know, I said white maybe because I'm still trying to decide. It's kind of tough. You know what I'm saying? Um, I love the, the panda look, the white with the black top. That's, you know, that's what came it came with. You know, that's OEM. And I love that color. I love that color. It looks good. But I've also been dabbling like, I really, so the wheels without a doubt, there's no, I mean, it hasn't changed. So the wheels without a doubt are the Hyper Silver KMPs. Now, I know I wanted bronze there for a while, but I changed my mind. Those wheels look so good. Those wheels, the color of them, I just love the color and I love the, the traditional five star. It looks like a Patrick star. Five star. And uh, I just love them, so that's the ones I'm gonna go with, without a doubt. And it's gonna be 17. They're 17 by uh, by nine, okay? So I've got that, and um, that's that's the one what I'm going with. But I was thinking about colors that go good with that, right? That go good with the wheel. Sometimes you have to build around a certain focal point that you like. And um, to me, nothing. I don't think there's another color out there that looks good with wheels that are silver like that um, than black. Like a black car on silver wheels like that. Like think about a black, think about, you know, your favorite black car on some RPF ones. Because that's kind of the sil silver that the KMP Hyper Silvers are. Or like that RPF one style. Um, it looks, I mean, they just pop. They just pop differently on a black car. So I was thinking about going all black, but then I realized how difficult it is because, um, you know, everything else is white, so it's going to stick out. You know, the door jams, all that stuff, you got to get that all painted. And uh, it was just, I know it sounds lazy, but it's just going to be a whole lot easier to go back the original color. So I also dabbled with just going all white, even the top and everything. But I love that canopy top look. You know what I'm saying? I love the fact the top being black um, on that white car. It just... It hits different for a lack of better terms it hits different so I think I'm gonna stick with it man I think you know I always go over this in my head the paint is really the only thing that changes in my head um, but I always go back to the same thing going back with the original color I think about it I talk about it I get hyped up and then I'm like nope going back with the original color so I, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it's gonna stay that and um, that's what I need to do is get paint though um, the body is pretty much ready. I've got to do. I'm gonna do a video on it. I got to do some work on that front bumper. See if I can save it. If not, I'm gonna have to try to find one. I found an NA front bumper, but I don't like them. I want the turbo model front bumper. So, so um, I'm having a hard time finding one locally because shipping on those bumpers for some reason is ridiculous. I guess because they're big and bulky, but um, it's hard to find a local bumper that's a turbo model. Okay, so that's an issue I have. Now, I want to, before we get into, you know, how Seamless itself is doing, you know, um, last thing on the town, I just want to give you guys a rundown of the final product on, on my plans on it. Final, final, like done, done, when, when these goals are, are met, the car is done, no longer going to be tweaking on it. It's literally just going to be the flagship car for Seamless, and we're going to drive it to shows, we're going to have fun in it, that kind of stuff. So final form, okay? Paint job, like I said, black on top with the white body. We're going OEM everything, okay? OEM everything, OEM tail lights, OEM headlights, all that good stuff, okay? And it's all gonna be true to Talon. You know, they've got different ones for the Eclipse and all that, but it's gonna be true to the Talon, okay? Um, let's see. The front, the front bumper on the bottom, I wanna run a skirt across there or a lip. I think I'm gonna go with a carbonatic slip, okay? The other thing I wanna do is I think I think eventually, let's see, final plan, um, definitely carbon fiber, 
for the cowling where the uh, windshield wipers go. Um, but for now, it's rusted, so I'm gonna sand that down and paint it black. It's gonna look good. It's gonna match the car. Um, as far as the engine goes, engine's gonna be the 2.3 stroker. Like that's this is the final form. 2.3 stroker with um, with I think I think I want to go with the R2 cam. So the R2, if you look in the GSC's lineup of cams. They have cams that are specifically designed around the 2.3 stroker and uh, those the R series. You know, the S series, S2s and S3s are like, they're like, I don't know, they're the best, one of the best cams you can get for the 4G63. But um, I want to try out these cams that are set up just for the stroker, okay? So R2 cams. Um, Let's see, for the valve train, you know, obviously I'm gonna go GSC stuff, so it's gonna be the GSC springs, GSC valves, um, Kigley HLA, all right. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm getting kinda hyped just talking about it. I'm getting excited, man, because I wanna build that engine. I'm just an engine guy, man, through and through. If I could, if I could find up somebody that could be part of Seamless that's a paint body guy, man, we'd be set, we'd be set because they could knock that stuff out because they're good at it and they're efficient at it already and I can do the mechanical part and do we could we could whip out cars fast so if you know anybody or you are somebody who's good at painting body hit me up man we can work something out you know what I mean we can build this thing so um, anyway that's my call out to you guys but uh, let's see I'm getting hyped about that engine so um, so for the for the um, why well, can't I think of the actual term? I want to say valve lash adjusters, but they're not. They're hydraulic. They're hydraulic lifters. Okay. Um, the one G originals weren't all that great because they were small and they would they would lose oil pressure and start tapping. So you go with the revised, or you can go with like the GSC No Tick. So one of those, j just one that's not going to tap. It's like got the revised bigger holes with, with better oil flow. Um, let's see what else needs to be done to the head. Um, I'm gonna get, kind of get specific with you guys and set this out. That way, I can also watch this video to remember what the heck I said is my plan. You know what I mean? And put my foot down on it as a hard, hard yes or hard no. Um, I think that's it for the head. You know those one uh, G heads? Because that's what I got. The six bolt, six bolt one G heads. Um, I want to say one G doesn't matter which generation, but six bolt head flows really well. Um, they're saying that they flow really well and you don't actually need to port them you know necessarily unless you're getting there's a lot of things that with this 4g63 engine you don't need to do until you need crazy amount of flow at about a thousand horsepower so which is really cool because that's not my goal so let me go ahead and tell you my goal because i probably would have forgot that and my goal is like 600 horse okay something real streetable that doesn't break things all the time it's going to break some stuff 600 horsepower is going to break some things but not all the time, right? Not not every time you you get on it. So, um, 600 horse is my happy my happy place. You know, I even be happy with 500, but 600 would be the goal. 600 horsepower car. I mean, you're getting it, dude. You're getting it, and it's very streetable. It should still be streetable. Um, so that's it for the head. Um, let's go down to the block. So block is going to be a um, naturally aspirated block. Okay, a naturally aspirated uh, 4G63 block. So the reason I want to do that is because I'm doing a stroker, right? Um, I've discussed this time and time again, but I'll explain it again. With a stroker, the turboed model 4G63s have an oil squirter, right? They have oil squirter for each piston. It squirts the bottom of the piston to keep it cool, right? Well, when you go with forged pistons and rods, you don't need that. You don't need a squirter. And then secondly, it's going to be in the way, or I guess mainly. That's the big problem is that it's going to be in the way of your of your crank and everything because you're going with a stroker crank so you're going with a, a crank that's got a longer stroke that comes out of a 2.4 so a 4g64 engine that's what we're that's the difference there so it would hit that so we go with a block that doesn't have them yeah you can remove them on the turbo model but i've already got a non-turbo model so what's the problem just run that so we're going to have it clean it up they're going to i'll send it to the shop they'll clean up the cylinders and then we'll put forged internals in it with the stroker. I'm going with a Mitsubishi, uh, Mitsubishi stroker 100 millimeter crank. 
And uh, let's see, as far as bottom end goes, I'm just going to go with uh, probably King or ACL, Barons. It doesn't really matter to me. Either one of those are really good. Um, and let's see, what about what else on the bottom end there? I mean, obviously, ARP, head studs. And uh, I haven't decided whether I want to do um, ARP studs for the uh, for the crank crank bolts or not. Don't know yet. Crank cap bolts. We'll see. But that's pretty much the build on that. And then um, you know the exhaust manifold probably gonna go with the tubular. I don't know. It might stay with FP. Well, I can't really do FP if I'm gonna do an H HX40. But I haven't. It's not set in stone what turbo I want to do. I was going to do an HX35 because I have one of those readily available, but um, I don't know, honestly. I might go with something else. I might decide I want to do something else, you know. Um, I haven't really made my mind up on what exactly I want to do, so, on the turbo-wise. That one I'll have to come back to you guys on. It was going to be HX40, and it might still be. That's still an option. I know a lot about that turbo and what it does for these engines. So, um, you know, it's between that one and a couple others, but I'll give you guys an update on that. Um, but that's the engine build. And then on the transmission, obviously I've just got to get a lot of parts from Jack's transmission um, and, and build it up. I guess they call it stage three or whatever, but basically I want to build it, overbuild it. You know, build it to, you know, 800 to 1,000 horsepower. That way it's solid. You know, we're only going to be running 600 or so. But it's going to be solid. It'll hold up. You always overbuild your drivetrain components. Just always overbuild and you'll have reliability. People want to put it like right at that point. You know, they want to do do a 400 horsepower rated axle for a 400 horsepower car. And then they decide they want to add power and they snap an axle. So really, you just need to overdo it on your initial build. Uh, initial build. So that's that. You know whatever stage they are high horsepower drive axles um drive shaft will be replaced as well and um you know t case will have to be reinforced as well Jax has all that stuff to upgrade it though which is really awesome um so that's that obviously the car is going on coilovers because i can't you can't fit anything wider than an eight inch wide um i think it's eight inch wide um on those cars so it may be nine, but I think it's eight inch wide. You can't fit anything wider than that on your factory suspension on these uh, 1G DSM. So, got to go with coilovers in order to clear those nine or nine and a half inch KMPs I'm putting on there. Um, so, that'll be set, the setup for the suspension. Obviously, all the bushings and ball joints and everything will be rebuilt and replaced um, with polyurethane, probably. And, um, I mean, Dang, that kind of simplifies it, doesn't it? Like, that's pretty much it. You know, um, probably go with a larger intercooler when we go to that point. Um, probably from ETS, a larger intercooler. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to stick with uh, with an EEPROM um, e -prom DSM, uh, ECM, engine control module. Um, I think they call it PCM, but I call it ECM because that's what Nissan calls them. Um, that has a DSM link on it or ECM link, whatever you want to call it. And uh, that way, I, I, to me, that's the best tuning setup. I mean, you can do Hall Tech, you can do AEM and stuff. But to me, um, they have it set up perfect, man. You hook your laptop up and you can adjust everything. And that's what I like. And that's what I'm trying to delve into anyway is tuning, right? Like, that's my big deal. With, and I want to be the king, not the king, I guess. Obviously, this thing's been way out. And there's, it's been out for so long that there's just a, there's just too many people out there, and that's fine. That doesn't mean I can't do it. I'm just saying that I'm not trying. I, I didn't mean to say king. What I'm trying to say is, I want to know that engine like the back of my hand. Like I want to be able. To, that's the first one I want to master. And so, get that one mastered, and then move on to other ones. But I just want to get a lot of seat time and tuning these 463s and get good at them, because it's one engine at a time. You got to learn. You got to learn. Several you gotta you gotta tune uh, a guy I was watching said you gotta tune at least 10 to 20 of a particular engine to really get the feel of them and really understand the nuances of that engine to be able to like do a really good tune on one and then I'll move on obviously and then I just I just keep adding different engines to my 
to my um, rap sheet, you know what I mean, my, my resume. So that I can, you know, be good when I have my dyno, I'll be set. So, uh, anyway, that's the plan for the car, man. Um, you know, everything else aesthetically, it's going to, you know, be here and there. Probably going to do bride seats and stuff like that. I've got some special ideas that's for another podcast on accessories from Seamless, like what I would like to do. And i got some ideas. So, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring those up and uh, tell me what you guys like. I'll probably do them, whether you like them or not, but... Tell me what you like or give me some ideas on what you would change. Um, but anyway, let me give you a quick, I know this one's ran long, but let me give you a quick update on um, Seamless itself. Basically right now in the shop, it's kind of in a disarray because I've been doing so much stuff. Um, trying to get it back in order. Um, I got some new socket trays and stuff. So I'm trying to get all our tools organized. Um, I really want to get to the point where I've got two sets of tools. That way, I'm not having to bring mine from my shop from work um, to the shop every day. Um, that would be very nice. Not having to carry those around all the time because I make a living with those, and then I got to carry them and you know risk a chance of losing them, this and that. So that's what I'm doing at the shop right now, just getting that all straightened out. Um, besides working on the talent. And then uh, let me just give you an up update on the on the guys, man, on what everybody's doing. Uh, so DJ, you know, he's a uh, DJ. I don't know if you remember him. He's got the K-Swap hatchback. Um, I want to let him tell you guys. We're going to do an interview with him. Let him tell you guys um, his thought process on all that. But, um, you know, the K-Swap hatchback is no, no more, no longer at the Seamless Shop. We do not have it anymore. And I want him to explain that and... You know go through that with y'all because um, he's got another build in mind so but I just want him to discuss that so I won't get too deep into that but um, DJ's doing good for all you guys that, that you know worried about him or you know haven't seen him in a while and wondering where he's at DJ's doing great he just uh, needed to take a break and um, we're gonna start with a fresh project but don't don't worry he still got the uh, he still got the other Civic that we did the headlights and stuff on so He's still riding around in a Civic. He just he just uh, had to get rid of that one. So I'll let him explain that. I'll I'll get off that subject before I let the cat out the bag. Um, as far as Derek goes, uh, I need to get him back on the podcast. He's been asking to get on the podcast. We just haven't had, been able to link up at the same time. So um, he's actually got a WRX now, which is really cool. And we just put a uh, cool over suspension on. And... Um, that's really cool. I like it. I like it. Um, you know, obviously, I will drive boosted. That's my thing. So, he went down the right road, in my opinion. And um, we need to get him on and get him get him uh, talking because he's always got a lot to bring to the table. You know, he's a mechanic, too. So, he's got a lot to bring to the table for you guys on tips and strategies and stuff like that. So, need to get him back on. And then, uh, my boy Travis, I want to introduce you guys to him. Um, I want to get an episode where we're doing that because um, he was at the beginning of any kind of idea I had on cars, man. Um, he was, you know, my high school, my high school best friend, and and uh, you know, we always had this plan that we were going to have a shop together, right? Um, you know. I was going to be the mechanical dude and he was going to be the body shop guy and you know it didn't work out you know what I'm saying he didn't get to go to paint and body shop you know life does things you know and, and you gotta you just gotta run with it you know what I'm saying you know you gotta play it by ear we can plan all day long but really you know how life works out is a little bit different you know what I mean we can't plan for that so but um, we'd really like to introduce you to, to him because you know he was the one that helped me spark all of this a long time ago back in high school my my big idea on this and uh here's like a big idea term again but um i want to get him on pick his brain because he's got a lot of great ideas and uh i'm very very proud to um to bring him on board and uh and build this empire with these other guys man so I, we got a really good group of guys and uh, i'm excited to see where we go from here so be on the lookout to see us, man. Uh, be on the lookout to see us at local car shows and stuff here in the area, here in the East Texas area for now. 
we're going to be going to some big events too, like Cletus and Cars and stuff like that in the future. Um, but, you know, we just haven't been able to link up just yet. So, anyway, that's the update on everything, man. Sorry it was long-winded. I uh, hope you're still sticking around. If you're not, you know, that's cool. Obviously, you're not hearing this, but um, that's the update. That's the update. So, my question to you, though, like, this is a serious question. I, it, you know, if you didn't ask answer any other question I had on any other podcast, my serious question is, please, please just tell me, you know, send me a comment, send me a message, whatever. I would like to know what my what my audience wants wants from us you know what i'm saying um what are you looking for you know what i mean are we putting out what you're looking for what are you looking for because if you're watching i want to give you what you want if i have it to give if it's information if it's entertainment you want to see more of the car you want to see how the shop evolves just tell me um tell me what you want to see like stevie i want to see this i want to see that and uh, we'll be sure to get it out to you. I will make sure that it's my number one effort to get that out to you. Whatever my audience wants, that's what I want to put out there. So um, I've got plenty to give. I've got plenty to offer. And I just need to know what direction you guys want this to go in. So otherwise, we're just going to be documenting the shop and seamless. And I'm going to be putting out topics on the episodes that I think um, would help you guys the most or are the most entertaining. I'm not the most entertaining person in the world, I know, but um, I've got plenty to offer. Um, so anyway, this has been your boy Stevie G, and we'll see you on the next episode. Later.